Let's do a little checkup from the neck up with attitude. I call it mental hygiene. You brush your teeth, you brush your hair, you shave your head. Do you brush your brains? Do you have a system to be able to brush your brains every day? There's a lot of negativity out there, okay, in the media, with your family, with your you know, partner, your spouse, with your managers, with your manufacturers, uh, with your customers. There's nonstop negativity. You drive down the road, road rage. You've got to have a way to systematically, systematically brush your brains and get rid of that. I've got a red book on Amazon called Unstoppable Attitude. Um, it's a fantastic book, all the different practices I've used to help myself and thousands of people at this point. But there's a couple of things I'd like to point out that are in that book. There's like 120 exercises, just maybe four or five that you might find beneficial. The first one is this. Write down your goals, write down your gratitudes in your own handwriting and look at them every day or rewrite them every day or once a week. Now I personally, formally rewrite my goals and my gratitudes January 1 and June 1. That's my two trigger points. I know people that do it every day which is phenomenal but a lot of people don't do it at all. So you've got to write down your goals and gratitudes till that list is refined and it's really you at your core and it makes sense. And then you want to research or sorry, read that every day so it starts to really program your subconscious mind so these ideas aren't here, they're here. They go from here to here, here to here. And when you train yourself every day and drill your skills, you're taking that information from here to here. You can't use stuff that's back here. You can only use stuff that's here. And I can't think of anything more important to have here than your goals and what you're grateful for. So you stay in your lane. Staying in your lane means staying between your goals and your gratitudes. Anything outside of that is just a bullshit negative waste of time for you, which is now to the next concept. I really believe life is a donut. In the middle of the donut is all the stuff you worry about and stress over that you cannot control. The meat of the donut is all the stuff you can control. Listen, if you can't control it, you got to stop patrolling it. You have no business talking about it or looking at it. All the stuff you can't control is supposed to be entertainment. Okay, it's just supposed to be stuff that's laughable. The economy, the weather. Um, in a lot of cases, if you're a salesperson, the car is on the lot. You know, sometimes even, you know, practice in the store. If you can't control it, do not patrol it. And what happens now is your stress level drops and you're able to move your energy and your time to an area you can control, which is the meat of the donut. Only focus on things you can control. Now, here's the beauty of it. The more you focus on stuff you can control, the stuff you can't control becomes ridiculous, becomes comical. You would recognize it right away. But I was stuck in a trap from 15 to 25 where all I was focusing on was all the stuff I couldn't control and I lost focus and attention and energy and all the stuff that I could. So please, life is like a donut, only focus on the stuff that you can eat, the stuff you can control. Next one, ask yourself these questions every single day before you go to work, write them down in a post-it note, put on the mirror in your bathroom, or as Marty, my trainer, has done, write it down in dry erase marker on your mirror so when you're brushing your teeth, you're reading your goals and gratitudes and also maybe these five daily questions. So every day I do all of this. That's why I'm able to speak to this without any notes. I do this every single day. My first question I review in the morning is this. How do I want today to be? I might ask myself that in the shower. How do I want my today? Now, depending on the day and what I'm doing, I get a different answer. But that becomes my goal for the day is to live at that level. How do you want today to be? Number two, what do I have to do today? It's a prioritization type question. It's really clarity. It uh, uh, reduces my stress. I often find the more that I ask this stuff every day and I do it every day, the list is fairly short because I keep up with things. But what do you have to do today? Number three, how are you doing through interactions? Walk through all the departments in your dealership or in your company, your home, um, social media, when you're driving to work, when you're going home, uh, sporting events you attend, um, your children, your pets, people that you coach. I don't know what your life is about. There's, go through this and actually imagine all the people that you're involved with regularly, the people that you touch. How are you doing with those interactions? If you do this question every single day, you're going to identify people that you have to change your approach with. Pay more attention to. Stop paying attention to or just change up what you're doing. But really, it took me into my 30s to understand how important relationships really are in this world and in business. Number four question. How do you want tonight to be? Uh, right now, I'm sitting at uh, 6 p.m. I've trained all day long. I'm here you know, doing my, my, my social media routine and stuff from Marino TV. And I want my night to be great. It's going to start probably in about an hour, an hour and a half. How do you want tonight to be? I want mine to be productive and relaxing. I'm still in productive mode. Relaxing is going to come in a little bit. And the last one is two things you're doing well and two things you could do better relative to your personal goals and gratitudes. So now you take out your goals and gratitude list and you look at it and you go, okay, what am I doing well here and what could I do better? Self-awareness is priceless. Self-awareness happens by you paying attention to yourself every single day. New Year's resolutions don't freaking work because they happen once a year. They're not written. They're barely loose great intentions. Sometimes you're drunk or hungover when you start doing these things. But regular programming of goals and gratitudes, your five daily questions, staying in your lane of goals and gratitudes, and 
reminding yourself to focus on the donut that you can use, the outside of the donut, the stuff you can control, is very beneficial. The last part is what I call flipping out. You want to focus on your flip every single day to make sure you are on point. F is focus. What do you focus on most of the time? What are you focusing on right now while I'm talking? What are you paying attention to? Is it empowering you? Is it making you worse? Is it just send me something ridiculous that I don't know, my, my collar is not right or I got something in my teeth? Like, what are you focusing on? What do you focus on with the customer? I don't know, but focus changes outcome. Language. How do you talk to yourself in your head? Self talk in sports is fundamental. It changes your whole approach, and self talk changes your focus. And the language you talk to other people with changes their focus, so language and focus go hand in hand. I is intensity. Is your intensity appropriate for the situation? Am I too intense right now for this video? Am I not intense enough? I don't know. I'm just being myself. But sometimes your not intensity really doesn't match the situation. So are you appropriate in your job and your career with the level of intensity you should be doing? And the last one is P is the physical aspects of state management, of mental hygiene. So here's the physical aspects, the fundamentals of state management. First one is hydrate. Clear P keeps you energetic because you're hydrated. The darker your pee, the more dehydrated you are, and you're not going to perform at your best. So drink water, stay hydrated, pee clear. My friends, next one is breathe. We're mostly oxygen and water, so take some deep breaths during the deal, when you're on the phone, when you're outside walking your lot, or wherever you're working in business, take some breaths because breaths keeps your energy up. And the third one is nutrition. Nutrition is important for long-term health, but breathing in water is way more important for daily energy. Watch your pace, watch your facial expressions, and watch your posture. Face, pace, and posture affect how you feel and affect how people relate to you because people will mirror you. People pick up your perceived mood or state from your body language. Remember, re uh, perception truly is reality. If people perceive you're bad, then you're mad. If people perceive you're happy, you're happy. If people perceive that you're kind of zen and you, know, you got it all together, then I guess that's how they perceive you. You know what starts to happen? Perception starts to become reality. Really, really pay attention to what you're projecting to yourself and to the world. Um, I've taken this very seriously because I had to. I was in a place, again, read it in my books, uh, that I didn't want to be at, and I had to snap out of it real quick. And it took me a while to get out of it, but I saw some real, real quick, immediate results with some of these ideas I just gave you, and I've obviously built on it from there. And here's my friend. Brush your brains. Brush your teeth. Uh, physical hygiene is important, too. Like, if I'm buying something from somebody in a restaurant, I see dirty shoes. I see crumpled up pants, stains on pants, a stain in a tie. I'm like... Ma'am, dude, you're, you're not into it. Like, you're just not into what you're doing. What are you doing? And it's gonna reflect where you go in life. So mental and physical hygiene are important. This step or these, this video here, these, these ideas, is more about brushing your brains. Do it every single day. As a matter of fact, maybe do it several times a day until your neurology shifts and you find a new center that you're living in. And then people are gonna come back and go, Dwayne, what, what's going on with you? You seem so different. You're not the same guy I met in high school. You're, you have, I saw you five, 10 years ago. You're this, you're that. Hopefully always getting better. But people see this as much as as much as we need it. Anyways, I'm Dwayne. We'll see you on the next one.